Hey, how you doing? My name is Chris. Welcome to my shop. This is the companion video to go along with my iron acetate explained video. Uh, and today we're going to be actually using the iron acetate on different species of wood. And um, I'm going to introduce uh, five species of wood today. One of which we know iron acetate uh, will work on without any doubt because it's full of tannins. And that would be um, the oak. But there are other hard woods that iron acetate doesn't work as well on because the wood itself doesn't have a lot of tannins in it. And those woods would be uh, maple. And uh, also I have some rough cuts from some birch. Uh, both are hard woods, but both are very, relatively low in tannins. And uh, it's been said that you know iron acetate doesn't work on these woods and I'm gonna disagree. Um, we're also gonna be testing it out on other woods that are lower in tannins. Uh, poplar, for instance, and also pine. So stick around. And I'll show you what we're going to do with this stuff. We're going to use iron acetate, full strength, diluted, colored, and we're going to prep these uh, woods that have no uh, real large amounts of tannins in them uh, a special way so that we can get the iron acetate to activate with it. So stick around and we'll get to that next. All right, uh, well, I'll uh, tell you what, come on over here and I'll show you what I got going on with all this stuff. Okay, what you're looking at here is I did two uh, jars of the iron acetate, um, um, and that was two cups of vinegar to one steel wool pad, and this has been sitting here for a week. Uh, so I'm gonna have to strain that out to make sure I get all the steel wool out of it that still remains. Um, so therefore I have an empty one, an empty uh, jar here with just a coffee filter and a rubber band around just to filter out any kind of the steel wool that might still be left in there. Uh, got some vinegar to do some diluted uh, versions of this. Uh, I got the tea mixture to use on the woods that don't have a lot of tannins in them. And if you saw my last video, this is nothing more than three cups of boiled water to 10 tea bags. And I used mostly Irish breakfast tea in this. Um, some cups so we can do some measuring and do some different ver uh, variations of this and then some food coloring because food coloring can be used with iron acetate to give the wood a different color. So I tell you what, let me get this stuff strained and then we'll get busy. Okay, so here's what we got out of these two jars. This is basically uh, four cups of vinegar and two steel wool pads. That's what the mixture was. Um, here's what we're going to be using. Um, the oak, the maple, uh, the poplar, the pine, and the birch. So let me just go ahead and separate this and get one piece out for each. So we can test this full strength on each one. And I can tell you right up front, I haven't sanded any of these pieces. If you're gonna use this um, iron acetate on wood and you're looking to do it on a finished piece, you do wanna sand your wood. You just don't wanna sand it too aggressively. Um, and by that means, don't sand it too much. Um, I usually take my, when I do sand it, I will sand it up to like 180. I'll like grab a damp rag and I'll wipe the wood down, then I'll raise the grain, then I'll sand it again. And then we'll apply the iron acetate. Um, I'm going to apply the iron acetate uh, directly onto this wood without using uh, the tea mixture that I, uh, I talked about earlier. Um, it will, I'll show you what it does straight on the wood. Okay, we're going to let that sit for about oh, maybe half an hour, an hour at the most. Once again, that's uh, oak. That's uh, maple, that's poplar, that's pine, and that's birch. So we're going to let that sit and we'll come back and we'll take a look at it. Okay, it's been about a half an hour. Let's uh, go ahead and wipe this off, see if there's any uh, extra look on here. And you can see the differences between them. I'll show you, uh, tell you what, I'll bring you in the before and after. This is before with the oak. This is uh, before with the maple. This is poplar, this is pine, and then finally this was the birch. So after about a half an hour, that's what we got. Let me uh, go ahead and take these pieces out now, and what I'll do is we'll go ahead and treat the other pieces here with that tea mixture and see if we can't get the effect to intensify just a little bit. All right, we'll move our acetate off to the side there. And this is the tea that I brewed earlier. So we're gonna go ahead and apply this tea to this and then we'll apply the iron acetate to the wood after the tea has soaked in a little bit. So let's get that done. All right, there we go. Once again, we're keeping it in the same order. We've got the oak, maple, poplar, 
pine, and birch. We'll let that soak in just for a little bit. And while it still looks to be a little bit damp, well, then we'll go ahead and apply the iron acetate and see if we can intensify the effect that we got from before. Okay, I think we've let the uh, tea sit on this long enough. Let's go ahead and just kind of wipe it off, just to get the excess tea that might still be on the surface here off. And then uh, bring in our iron acetate once again. And let's hit this one more time and see if we get a noticeable difference between uh, what was the wood uh, without the tea treatment and then with the wood with the tea treatment. So here we go. And you can see just that short amount of time, this has really begun to take some color on a lot faster than it did earlier. But we're going to let this sit for the same amount of time that we let the uh, previous boards that we did uh, sit. And we'll come back and take a look at that. Okay, we've let that sit for about just about the same amount of time we did the uh, previous wood. Uh, once again, just as a reminder, we have the oak, the maple, the poplar, the pine, and then the birch. And just as a comparison, let me go ahead and bring the other pieces in. This is with the tea mixture. This is oak without the tea mixture. You can see what the iron acetate did on this without any uh, the tea mixture on it. And the tea mixture, if you look, if you can tell on this camera, it gave it a real black appearance. It's, it's, it's actually giving it more of the opaque and the, the ebony effect that uh, a lot of people are really looking for. Um, and we can do the same thing with the uh, maple. You notice this is much more brown and this is much more black. And it goes pretty much the same way for the poplar, the pine, you can see the difference here. And then finally, we have the birch without the uh, tea, and then the birch with the tea. And obviously getting a much more black effect on it when we use the tea and introduce the, um, uh, the tannins that are in the tea into the wood, we get it much more black. So. Uh, let me pull back and uh, we'll take a look at uh, doing something different with this iron acetate and maybe get some uh, cooler effects. Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's try this. I'm going to take uh, some of that iron acetate and I'm going to probably do about four ounces here. And then I'm going to dilute it, uh, double it basically. I'm, I'm going to add some uh, just regular vinegar to it and I'll take it up to eight ounces. Um, and then I'm going to introduce some uh, food coloring to it. Uh, what color do you guys want to see. What do you say we try blue? Who doesn't want blue wood? Don't go there. <laughs> we'll, we'll introduce some blue food coloring uh, into a diluted version of the iron acetate. Um, we'll apply it to the wood uh, both raw uh, without the tea uh, uh, pre-stain and uh, then we'll do the tea mixture and then we'll follow that up with the same uh, iron acetate and the blue food coloring and we'll take a look and see what we get on that. All right, we'll get back to what we're doing in a second, but I want to take a moment to talk to you about today's sponsor. And today's sponsor Dad, is what? What are you doing on my bed? Um, you got your uh, shoes on my bed? Oh, I'm trying get to talk. Off. Come on. I'm trying to talk about my the sponsor of today's video. Do it on your bed. What? Get off. Come on. Oh my god. You're so annoying. Okay, that didn't work out so well. I guess there's no free mattress in my future. Anyway, okay, let's get back to this. <laughs> hey, win some, you lose some. Um, let's try this again with uh, blue. And I, I don't know, I maybe put like 15 drops of the blue in there. Maybe that might have been too much. You know, it was full. It's now down to like right about, you know, right about there. Um, but let's give it a try. All right. We'll let that sit for the same half an hour or so that we let the others sit, and we'll see what that comes out looking like. Okay, it's been about a half an hour, so let's go ahead and uh, wipe this off and see what we get. And it's a, if, if you're one of those staining professionals that doesn't like blotchy finishes, this probably isn't for you. Um, but it does give it that aged and distressed look, and this time we're doing it, and we're getting some color. And just as a contrast, um, oak before, oak after. Okay, so let's go ahead and take uh, our last five pieces over here and uh, move these guys down the line, move these guys in, and as I mentioned earlier, I'll go ahead and treat these with the tea. First, you don't need to see me do that again. Um, I'll treat them with the tea. I'll go ahead and uh, treat them also with the iron acetate that has the blue coloring in it, and we'll be able to compare the two and see if there's any differences. That has given us some pretty cool colors. Um, obviously, there's a tint of blue. Parts of it look kind of uh, almost aqua in a way, but I can compare it. This is the oak 
without the tea, same blue uh, iron acetate, and then of course the uh, birch. And uh, with the tea, it did a lot of the same uh, thing that it did uh, previously, is it kind of gave it more of a blacker uh, look, but you could still see the blue coming through. There you go. Shows you the uh, different various uh, things you can do with iron acetate. And I can clump all these together and give you an overall shot so you can see um, all the oak together, all the maple together, all the poplar, uh, pine, and then birch too. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, this is the original oak that we did, but just the straight acetate. This is the oak with the uh, tea first, and then the acetate. This is the oak with the uh, blue acetate without the tea, and this is what the uh, oak looks like when you prep it with the tea mixture and then put the uh, blue acetate on top of that. Okay, so there you go. Like I said, I am just simply scratching the surface on what you can do with iron acetate. There are literally thousands of variations that you can create yourself uh, with this uh, formula. Um, and you know, Izzy Swan had a video out, I think about, gosh, I think it was about a year, year and a half ago. I'm gonna see if I can find a link to it. Now I'll, I'll, I'll leave that down below because uh, he did some he did some pretty cool stuff as far as coloring and, and some different ways he applied things too with using this uh, formula. Um, but I hope this helps, um, and I hope it uh, lets you know that uh, iron acetate will work on uh, just about any kind of wood. As long as you uh, apply it correctly, get it done right, and maybe uh, possibly give it a little helping hand, uh, it'll work fine for you. So get out in your shop and give it a shot for yourself. See if you like it. If you're looking to distress woods and just kind of come up with some crazy colors uh, because you're doing a mural or something, it may help you out. Iron acetate. All right, you guys take care. Get out in your shops, make that first cut, and I've got to go call... Um, the, the mattress people and let them know it's just not going to work out. I'll, I'll talk to you later.